Hello, and welcome to Let's Play Radiant Dawn. I'm your scoring captain. Today, we're going to be looking at three, I said, 161 and 162. So, in the previous maps, we got two big, three big new units, uh, Jill, Cyhark, and Teronio. Is As I mentioned in the 1-5 commentary, there are, they are basically going to break the game, along with Volog. Now, we have five units who are extremely good, when to include South. And pretty much from here, I try to match near uh, turn floors of almost every map, just because I have much better quality units. I can easily hit close to the turn floor, although a few times I will miss turn floors. So, speaking of that, the press for this map were just get some supports um, and buy a hand axe. So, I am going to want to get an 18 use hand axe and a 1 use hand axe for 312 strat. And this is one of the maps where getting that will be useful. I also remove Resolve from Toronio, and I give it to Ileana. So Ileana uh, likes Resolve because she actually can get to below half HP and can also one-round stuff. One of the reasons why Ileana is better than Nolan at doing this is because she actually takes more damage, so she gets into Resolve range. Uh, she actually doubles things when she uses Resolve because she has 13 speed instead of 11 speed. And finally, she actually has two range, which means that she can one round stuff a lot easier than Nolan while she's in resolve range. So I just set up some other thing, some other skills. They don't really matter much. Zyhark needs cancel renewal just so he can have better HP. His bulk is pretty bad. I'm going to be trying to use Zyhark as a project unit because I want him to promote as early as possible in 3-6. Um, in 3-6, if he is promoted, he can one-round enemy tigers. So Jill gets an instant promotion. Uh, since this is 0%, there's no re need, reason to not promote Jill. And the instant promotion gives her two things really nice. The first is she, that she reaches 16 speed. Uh, about a third of enemies on this map have 12 speed. And so 13 is a lot bigger than 12. And then it also gives her 9 movement, which is going to be really nice for this fight. Jill is one of two units in my army that can rescue drop Toronio. All right, here we go. So on this map, the uh, there is a bishop in the top left corner, which if I count, which is 24 tiles away from the best possible starting position as the crow flies. And so, if you were smart, you could shove Soth eight times, and Soth could reach the boss. Soth could reach that enemy, and if Soth crits every single armor knight, he would be able to. Tu you would be able to tutor in this map, but I didn't want to just ha YOLO Soth crits, so I'm going to be three turning this map, which still looks pretty impressive anyway. So on turn one, I send Zhark north. There are four enemies in the north that Zhark's going to need to fight. I'm sending Toronio to the east along with South. Um, so one property of being in saddlebags in this game is you cannot actually do what you can do in ROM hacks, which is to take support give. So in order to be given a unit in this game, you have to be in somebody in order for a unit to be given to some other unit in this game you have to they have to start the turn in saddlebags so by having Toronio start the turn in Volg saddlebags this means that Toronio will be able to be dropped into uh, Jill's inventory Jill's saddlebags so I do some cleanup here um, we get this really sick 52% hit uh, attack from Nolan which is coming up soon uh, let's just say that when your backup, pl the, the main plan was for Zyhark to actually kill this archer, this this stupid hand axe guy, and if he rolled down on defense, he Zyhark would have cleanly one-rounded him, and Zyhark could have gotten an adept proc or a critical hit, but since none of that happened, and I wasn't really thinking about backup strats up until I did this clear, because I was just like, oh, I'll do something, I just attacked with a very sick... 52% hit drop. 
don't do that. So here is uh, uh, Toronto needs to equip the Hand Axe. The reason he needs the Hand Axe is because there's a bunch of enemies with two range. Toronio actually can one-run all every single enemy that will be coming down, and he just cannot die. The only way he could die on this map is if he got killed by a hammer, but the hammer guy is really far away. Here's that sick 53 hit. 53 displayed hit hit. Backup strats, man. I didn't optimize backup strats. I just like, oh yeah, backup strat. So... We're now in position such that every enemy um, can get attacked by either Zyhark here. Don't worry about Zyhark survival. It's actually a lot better than it looks because these guys have terrible hit rates. Um, along with Zyhark having best biorhythm. Uh, he will always have best biorhythm at this point because of the time he spent in 1.6 and 1.5. And so the enemies over here are all just easy easy mop up that myrmidon could actually roll up on defense and he actually survived at one hp him surviving at one hp doesn't matter but it's kind of funny you'll see that there's actually leeway to just kill it okay so the enemies in the re most of the rest of the enemies in this map are just jokes um because this map was just a hey we gave you a bunch of new broken units how about you use them map it doesn't really matter as you can see, Volok's just one-rounding this stupid... Vol base Volok is one-rounding this guy with his fangs. This is just nothing. So on the last turn here, there are two major site objectives to look into. So there are three... There are two hidden items. There's a coin, which I have to pick up with the Scrub Brigade. And there is a... Uh, Armored Scroll, which Soph can pick up. There. Leonardo picked up the coin. There was, like, backup strats, but you didn't get to see them. And now, Jill needs to move to the, um, to the priest to kill him. And that was the bishop, that priest was the limiting factor that decided whether or not this map was going to complete, when this map completes. So, it picks up the... So it needs to equip the 5-3 dagger to kill the two Pegasus Knights to the left. And Jill can one round this uh, priest. It doesn't really matter if Jill had like a better weaker weapon, she would have also one rounded, but the 5-3 hand axe the 5-3 iron axe was just convenient. I think if you wanted to optimize reliability, you might want to go with a iron just a regular iron axe on Jill and give or well actually you no, know, you need the 5-3 iron axe on Jill for turn one. So it might be nice to give a regular iron, a bronze axe to Nolan to increase the reliability of the backup kill. But, I mean, increasing reliability of backup stress isn't always necessary. So now on to 162. So 162 is another trivially easy map. So this map, uh, the. <clears throat> you need to drop Tr Tronio. The boss is moving, so you don't. And it's a kill boss map. And the boss moves, so you need to be within the boss's range. The boss has two range, so you need a two range weapon, and you need to be able to one round the boss. So the boss is as the wyvern fly. The boss's attack range is as the wyvern flies, fourteen tiles away from your starting position. So Jill can trivially just drop Teronio on turn two, and that's the map. There really isn't actually anything else to say. So. The rest of this map is just bullshitting around and doing nothing to farm EXP on, Arela on units that kind of do things later, but not really that important. So here we rescue Toronio, and the next step is we're going to be baiting these unit, the <laughs> enemies on the south to be attacking not Makaya, so we can farm more EXP for Edward. In theory, the other thing you could do is just run to the left and do nothing. I farmed Edward EXP, but ultimately, Edward leveling up didn't matter much, and you could probably just get away with not doing this. It doesn't really improve anything. It just made one map slightly easier, but honestly, probably wasn't worth the effort. Alright. 
so one thing to note is that this strategy has one little stupid pain point, which is that Laverton, the boss of this map, has cancel, so you can actually just randomly die. Well, randomly fail to kill the boss. Not die, but fail to kill the boss. Turns out it doesn't matter very much because you are broken, so... That's convenient. So, with the exception of that, this strategy is like extremely reliable, and you just kill the boss, and you kill all these enemies, and you beat the map. So, we need to be careful about preventing the <clears throat> two calves in the top here from attacking our scrub brigade, you know, the units that aren't the big five. And then, on top of that, we're going to need to have Zyhart kill the Javelin guy, because Javelin guy can't attack. Sorry, because Zyhart can't kill him on enemy phase. Zyhart with the 4-1 uh, Iron Sword, one rounds almost every single one of these calves. A few of these calves do not get one-rounded by the 4-1 Iron Sword, and so he needed some procs for those. Ultimately, like, Zyhark not getting EXP optimization wasn't very important, and I spent way too much effort optimizing Zyhark's EXP when it wasn't necessary. Uh, there really isn't... One important thing, I guess, about Toronio in particular is that this is the last map we'll see Toronio until 3.12. Toronio has just been completely broken. Um, just sort of, hey, I'm making a cameo appearance, and then he's not going to be good for the rest of... He's not going to be here, but he's going to be good completely broken for the four maps where he exists and then he'll just bugger off and not show not show his face again like every other dawn brigade unit admittedly but it's just kind of sad about how toronio is actually like probably the strong the single the best of the growth units or at least hard carries of the dawn brigade even though his he's just Fat and white knight. After this map, we get Tormod, which who's also broken, and that was the destruction of Flaverton. Um, this map was cleared in two turns, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.